Today we're going to be painting a sci-fi shipping container in super bright yellows, just dry brushing, really lovely final effect. Welcome to the latest Artist Opus video, we're going to be painting this shipping container. This is a Reaper Bones uh, miniature, really simple assembly, it's just a top part and then the rest of the bottom part are amazing for the purposes of this tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be doing a uh, kind of a a very very rough base coat i say that you probably won't believe it but halfway through the video you'll be wondering what on earth i'm doing and <laughs> how i'm going to rescue the model um so we're doing a really rough base coat but then we're letting the vertical lines that we've got the stripes all over the figure they just completely detract attention away from that and we end up with a really really fantastic final result do stick around for all the video because you'll see me making a cock up and then trying to fix it um don't rush basically is the learning experience also if uh if you like it please like it if you enjoy it, then hit that bell notification, um, subscribe to the channel for future content, and also stick around because we're going to be announcing the winner of our texture palette later on in the video. This technique is pretty universal, um, the colours are also fairly universal, so we've done it before, and this is just something I've painted on stream. Um, you can take all the techniques and exactly the same colours and put them anywhere. You could be doing this on um, a monster, you could be doing it on armour, it doesn't really matter, it's a really universal technique, so thanks very much for tuning in, and I hope you enjoy. Okay, so I wanted to show people a fast way to pre-shade without an airbrush. I've primed this black using Chaos Black, kind of my default choice. It doesn't muck you about, works nicely in all weathers. And then I've used a Scale 75 grey primer spray. It's quite a light grey. Sprayed it facing upwards, just into the air outside first to get rid of the, the first spray, which is often a little bit more bitty or dotty or not smooth. And then I've basically aimed at the top part of what I'm doing, trying not to hit the bottom from a maximum of like 45 degrees. So some of the top edges have been hit, but generally speaking, we've got quite a nice fade up here and that is our pre-shading. So it's a brilliant way to get a pre-shade down fast um, without having to stipple it by hand. It's super quick. This took me about 15 seconds or something like that. We're now going to proceed to pre-shading with a brush and let's see how it goes. Excel for this, so this is our pre-shading step. Just gonna pop a little bit of water in our dampening pad. Work that in with our finger. If you wanna see more about how a dampening pad works, please just out, check out our ATST video that I did many years ago. Kind of goes through the ins and outs of it. Essentially, we are using it to introduce a little, reliably small amount of moisture to the painting process, and that has a load of benefits, like aiding with brush cleaning, making dry brushing smoother, and uh, wasting less paint and preserving life of brushes too. So we've got some white on our brush and we're just going to exaggerate the work that we put down here. Probably don't see that too much but the nice thing about this is we've, we've done one airbrush style pre-shade which is going to, it's a universal one. Uh, it's not texture based though, this is texture based. This is going to hit the stuff that sticks out more than it's going to hit the stuff that is recessed so we can get two levels of pre-shading on the go quite easily really efficiently and we're just going to do that all over our model building up to quite a bright pre-shade on the upper sections don't have to worry about this being too neat too delicate that's not what it's there for don't forget your edges and also the top. So we'll go all over doing this so we've built it up to a decent level and then that's gonna provide us our platform for our, uh, our colors. Okay, for our next stage, we're gonna be using Zerus Purple and Doom Ball Brown. I've already got them on my palette. Still sticking with the Big D. Um, it's just efficient at this stage. Now, we're not looking to completely obscure the good work we've put down before and particularly Zerus Purple has very good coverage. It's one of the reasons why we use it. So take care not to go too heavy with it and we can even do a base coat that is slightly thinner than we would have normally done with a series DD stuff in the past so you can use a bit of normal brushing use a bit of stippling but we're just looking to get that bottom layer completely covered so make sure that nothing is if it's if it's pure paint you're gonna have uh, much more uh, opacity, so you won't be able to see the work that we've put in 
Um, don't obsess about it, but it's nice to be able to keep a little bit of the work we've put in beforehand. Then the other thing is because of the nature of this, you are gonna have to get in there with your stippling and I'd actually go up and down because that will ensure that you get between these areas and you don't end up just base coating the raised areas. Uh, we're not doing a dry brush here for that reason, I'm trying to avoid that type of effect. So this all the way around in that kind of bottom quarter, one fifth, and we'll be fading into our next stage after that. All right, so our second stage or our third stage, we're gonna involve Scrag Brown in the mix. This is a lovely warm brown, uh, really, really a fan of this. Uh, so we're gonna mix that in with our Doom Ball. Again, not, not looking to keep it too thick and stipple it on top of what we got here. So we'll stipple this round and then we'll come we'll come around with the dry brush and kind of fade things into each other. Don't worry if this looks a little bit blunt and um, unsubtle at this stage. It's not something you need to be concerned with. Most of our tutorials tend to look a little bit messy until you've got to the like, at least the 60% mark, but often the 80% mark. So there you can see, we've gone all the way around there, it's super quick. And then simply for the next stage, we're gonna do a little bit of dry brushing. Now be aware that if your brush is wet, like mine is there, you're gonna get quite a bit coming off uh, the moment you stop stippling. Stippling's quite controlled, it goes exactly where you want it, but with this, you'll get streaking and stuff like that. So make sure that you're aware, depending on the effect you wanna get, how much is gonna be leaving your brush at any one time. Like I said, this isn't gonna be, we're not doing a Mona Lisa yet. Give us some time and we'll get there. And this is just the method that we'll be replicating in every layer past this one. Stipple um, your layer and then dry brush it down the model. So we're working through to a much brighter color now. This is why we chose the nice warm scrag brown. We're going through to Flash Kits Yellow. Now this is a layer paint, which means that it's not got quite as good coverage as it would have if it were a base. And that's kind of going to play into our hands uh, for this stage at least. So we get a nice mix, that's probably about 50-50. And we'll see how it looks there. If it looks too extreme, which that might be, we can always darken it down a little bit. With a scrag brown. Make sure you get all those recesses. It's very easy to kind of forget what you're doing and then not end up carrying through. This one might take a couple of coats to cover. We want our white to be influencing the final paint result, but we don't want it to be evident in it. So quickly working our way around. As you can see, I'm pretty much painting this in real time here. We ended up going up a little bit, but that doesn't matter too much. We can go all the way around again. And number one, make sure that we've got decent coverage here. You can always hair dry it between layers if it's not dried yet. We're working very fast, so that's a possibility. But then, importantly, gonna take our layer down a little bit more and also. fade out this stippling between layers a little bit. This panel shows perfectly what we're not looking to get, so this is why the second pass is important. Let's make that a little bit more opaque there, and then carefully stipple our way down, introducing a fade, and then once that's dry, we can go back and we can do the left right dry brush in this fashion. We'll do that all over the entire box and then we'll start coming in with a more pure yellow. Okay, so we're beginning to introduce the much lighter flash kits yellow now. We've still got some of our brown left on our brush, that's important. But as you can see, it's a noticeable kind of punchy up kick in color.
there's probably an argument for going side by side and doing this stiffly undercoat stage and then pretty much at the same moment doing the uh, the stipply fade that we need to do to kind of transition it into the color below. So kind of gently fade it in there. This is to get in the recesses. work your way up and down with stippling and um, also with traditional dry brushing until we're happy with the level of transition that we've got. Some variation is absolutely fine. It's a shipping container. It's not going to be perfect. Um, and we are going to be potentially putting some weathering or you could, put, um, you could put some branding or something on the side of it anyway. So don't worry if you've got some in variation in there. That's not an issue whatsoever. All right, so you might notice that I have got significantly less on my brush than I had before. What I've been doing is using the dampening pad and then just going back to the model and shifting excess because I had quite a bit of paint on my brush. It's not what I want. Um, now we are ready to get through to the yellow stage. All right, so before you start with the pure yellow, I just wanted to show you uh, some of you might have noticed that my brush looks like there's significantly less paint on it than there was. All I've been doing is going to my dampening pad, working the moisture into the bristles, and then you probably see here, my yellow's worked its way up a little bit higher. I'm just using the texture of the model as a place to remove what I've got going on here. And that's because I don't want too much of my previous stage showing on the brush, but also it's just good practice to clean your brush anyway. Um, these bits I've highlighted with a darker color, which I don't want. Um, that's because I've started and then as the orange has worked its way through the bristles, my colors actually got darker. So time to fix that now. Dampening pad first, pure flash gets yellow. Of course, it's not 100% pure. We've not changed brush yet, which we might do shortly. But for now, this is what we're working with. So you can stipple it, you can wipe it. You can see that I'm using kind of a, a combination variation of them. Whatever, make sure that you get it into the recesses is fine. It's very easy to pick up the raised areas, but not missing the recesses is really important too. So that initially at least is where our time is gonna go. These next stages are the ones where we're gonna hopefully smoothen out what we've got here. So you can kind of see bands of color working their way down the model. We will make them more of a background nuance than a noticeable thing once we've worked our way down with the dry brushing. So I'm just gonna basically get this all the way around and then we'll move on to the detailing. Really starting, starting to take shape now. So at this point, we've got our nice foundation of flash gets yellow in the upper areas. You don't have to perfectly cover every bit. You can see here there's a, a bit of a darker color showing through, that's fine. By definition, because we're using dry brushing, the edges are gonna get caught the most anyway, and that's the type of effect we're looking for, especially on these, uh, like the, the top or bottom framing, whatever you like to call it. You wanna have some darker stuff in the middle of that, so being pretty patient here. Starting where our yellow is the brightest, and then once we're confident that we've not got too much going on, on our brush in terms of uh, the amount of paint or the moisture level or something like that. When we know it's gonna behave predictably, that's when we can bring it down to the rest of the model. But it just takes patience at this stage, working your way up and down. You're better off putting too little paint on than too much. And you can always proceed with real caution, hold it further back on the brush and be a bit more delicate as you work your way down. So I'll be doing that all over the model and that should do a really good job of kind of making us forget that the background isn't that neat whatsoever, which is the idea with all of this stuff. <laughs> this is basically um, tricking our eyes and we're looking at these vertical lines and we're like, ooh, and then in the background, the fact that there's some mottled, not particularly perfect work, it won't matter whatsoever. So we'll repeat that all over the rest of the model. So at this point, we've introduced a couple of new colors to the mix. We've got ice yellow, which you'll have seen before, and we've got a fluorescent yellow. Uh, I'm using scale 75 here, but the Vallejo one is absolutely excellent too, so 
take your pick with those. I've also brought out a new XL brush. The reason for that is we are doing bright stuff now. So we'll probably also bring white into the mix at some point, but for now we are looking to carefully just kind of ramp these colors up to turbo levels. We're not gonna do anything absolutely mental, but what unlocking the fluorescent allows us to do is just add another layer of highlights um, that seem meaningful without going in a in the direction of turning things too white. Now you can see here that I've got the ice yellow, which is a little bit white on my brush currently, and that's doing a fairly good job for us. It's gonna desaturate it because it's got white in it though. If you're looking for something a little bit more, well, to be frank, realistic, then this is not a bad idea at all. You could just add ice yellow, ice yellow, ice yellow, and then maybe do a tiny one with a bit of white added in at the end. But um, I wanna have a really, really bright piece here. So I'm gonna be using the fluorescence for that purpose. So we'll work our way around just between these two here and then we'll come back in with the fluorescence. We've got this kind of very pale off-white icy lemony yellow. That's working its way nicely around the model. You can let it streak if you want. Um, you'll kind of get a, a, a cartoony effect, but I'm buffing it as carefully as possible. Ice yellow gives a really nice soft finish on things. So as I've said before, and I do want to stress, if you want something that is a little bit more realistic and it's not going to be drab, it's going to be bright yellow, whatever you do here, um, then using ice yellow is a really nice way to do that and it will keep it definitely far more realistic. Um, I'm just looking to introduce this for the, for the final punch, the fluorescent. So if you were to use a higher proportion, some buffing here on these pieces and all over actually just to soften it up. There we go. You could go for that type of finish if you're just using ice yellow and that is absolutely perfect, super solid. So it's just a matter of personal preference really, but we're gonna make this as bright as humanly possible. So we've got a little bit of white on our palette. bring that into play just adding it to the brush that we've had the ice yellow one before basically what this is going to be doing is anywhere that this touches our next layer is going to look twice as bright whatever it is two three times as bright one time as bright half a time as bright it's going to look much brighter uh, anywhere where we've hit with this pre-shade so proceeding with care here for the first time I'm kind of concentrating broadly on top edges and just on the the top part of the container. I've left the top completely blank in case any of you are wondering because it's really important that I have a good way to hold this miniature for, for doing this technique. It's a very physical technique dry brushing and being steady and having a secure grip on your model is as important as anything else is. Um, so this allows me to do this without worrying that I'm marking up my efforts or touching it with my fingers or something like that. So I've got the white down. That's important that we remove pretty much everything we've got on this brush before going into the next step because we don't want any flecks of white in there massively. So back to the dampening pad, work it out a little and then repeat it carefully selecting the areas that the areas we don't mind if we do accidentally put a little bit of a lighter splodge on all the top parts of our model and the top facing parts or significant edges all right we're good there that's the dampening pad and then take a little bit of that super crazy punchy fresh and yellow now these paints I've spoken about them before they're a little bit more like gels so they're very transparent they're not particularly opaque, and that means that they behave slightly weirdly. They also take a little bit longer to dry, so take your time, put on thin layers, and then just work your way all over the model with this. It's basically a filter here, so 
translucent filter that we're placing all over our model. Make sure it's on your bristle from all angles. Work it out on the texture palette. You can already feel the model being a little bit more tacky, so make sure you don't get fingerprints anywhere. looking great really picked out those details and punched them a little bit we will work our way over this a few times with this fluorescent paint um, not involving any more of this mixing it in the same place on the palette but we're trying to actively avoid getting the other paint in it and that should really help tie things over we'll do that and then we'll also come back and do the top so this is proof why you shouldn't rush things i thought i'd include this out of your interest this is me putting a all over wash down on the top bit because I, um, I tried to go too fast, so don't try to go too fast. It's not advisable. I think it is fixable, but um, luckily it's, uh, it, it should be kind of salvageable. So when you are doing this stuff, guys, go over it systematically, take your time, pick your zones, and then just work left to right across it. Don't try and do too much at once and um, map out what you're doing before you, before you start. So with this, what I would do is I'd treat it like it's a wall, um, but I'd have the dark area around the edges and light area in the middle and then go to lighter for the kind of the the frame around it so i'm going to try and achieve that now and then hopefully we'll come back to something that doesn't look dreadful in a couple of minutes okay so basically i've gone back in with the stages that have kind of been missed uh with a wash so this is the purple purple brown stage and the brown stage they've been glazed in. i'm going to dry them off now we've had some leakage which i can fix slightly at this stage but not completely, so we are gonna do our best to remedy my whoopsie. Um, I'll hair dry this now and then I'll proceed as normal and hopefully our end result doesn't show it too bad. And we are done. So I managed to salvage this top section. Um, not sure if you can notice, but the dry brushing on these sections where the paint is quite light, you managed to catch each edge really nicely because I went over this a couple of times, I have caked a bit. So rather than catching the top and bottom edge of these sections I've just caught them as an entire bar that's made the top quite striking you can probably tell from that angle it is um it's not subtle looks pretty pretty good really but um yeah that's just a kind of a, a secondary result of that one thing that I did notice from my my little cock up is that if you wanted to push your shading into the recesses like we've accidentally got here or has happened on the front or on the sides a little bit you can take that purpley brown mix of your Doom ball and your zero is purple and you could just push it into those recesses and that would ramp up the contrast even further i'm going to leave this one here for now that is awesome look great on any tabletop uh, i hope you've enjoyed it if you would like to see this type of tutorial again on more simple terrain or anything like that or you've got other color suggestions then please let us know So I hope you've enjoyed that tutorial. We went fairly in depth there. You got to see me make a mistake. You got to see me try and fix it. Uh, as I said in the beginning, the learning experience there is don't rush guys. Like we're already doing, whenever we're dry brushing, we're already doing something way faster than we would be able to get it otherwise. So um, don't get impatient with it. Just take your time and actually slow is smooth, smooth is fast and you'll get to the end and have an amazing result without <laughs> making a really annoying mistake. So uh, the winner of our competition from the Black Armor video, thank you so much. We were really really surprised with the amount of entries we had also there are so many good ones there we it's it's a struggle to know what to pick so we've actually put all of them in a spreadsheet and that spreadsheet is going to be updated each video we do and then we'll use kind of the top 10 15 of those as a really good um really good uh, touchstone for when we're deciding what to do our latest videos on so i'd like to congratulate jeff hildenbrand who suggested that we do some osl fire that is 100 percent something we're going to do next um, a couple of you have suggested similar, so sorry, uh, please uh, please keep making the suggestions. Uh, we'll definitely do some more giveaways in the future. And I think what we'll try with the OSL 5 is we'll actually try using some masking to do some shadow effects or something like that, which I've never done before. So it's quite intimidating, but um, I think I can figure it out, hopefully. So thank you very much for watching the video. As ever, please pop any future suggestions, criticisms, tips, uh, questions. 
down below uh, in the comments and we'll do our best to answer those to the best of our ability. Uh, we love seeing your suggestions and also follow us on social media, like the channel, subscribe, and uh, we hope to see you again soon.